Thanks. What's this up? A, not much, dude. This is a really cool guitar. Isn't I was jumping it? into it because this is the coolest guitar. It is so cool. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, welcome to the local pickup. I'm Jason Broadwater. I'm Chris Rivet. This is a really cool guitar. And this is a really cool guitar. This is a Rick and Backer. It's a 1985 Rick. So what, what, are you, what are you so excited about? It's just, I think it's the coolest guitar we've ever had on the show. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, because as I've confessed many times on here, um, as not necessarily the most technical musician or guitar historian or lover of the nuanced details of guitars but a designer that's what draws me in and this thing is just so ridiculously cool looking design wise yeah. it just everything the colors the shapes just ah, it's amazing yeah and you know um this is a so this is a 360 this is a 1985 rickenbacker 360. Uh, the 360s have the triangle uh inlays versus the dots uh, all Rickenbacker, or most Rickenbackers, have the laminated neck, which is mm -hmm. crazy different than other guitars. Yeah, you know? but definitely it gives it that look. And oh, it gives it a look and it gives it a feel. Yeah. I love the feel. Some people don't like it. I, I love oh, I, yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. very slick. But you never see a guitar like this because you have, you know, you have the red one, which is called Fire Glow. You have the mm -hmm. black one, which is called Jet Glow. And then you have the maple one, which is called Maple Glow. Mm -hmm. But it always has a white pick guard yeah. and white uh, a silver uh Pit, mm -hmm. pickups. Now this is the only thing silver on this guitar, but they're actually supposed to be a black cover right here, which we didn't get when we got the guitar. But mm -hmm. So it would have been blacked out too. Wow. But everything's black. The R uh, tail piece that's usually chrome mm -hmm. is black. The This is black. The headstock itself is yeah. black, not to mention the uh, truss rod cover, which they have an iconic yeah. truss rod cover. It goes way up because their name's so long. Yeah. Like the truck rod co truss rod cover goes way That's up. That's one of my favorite things. Oh, about it's killer, Rich. yeah. The design is so cool. The black uh, buttons, tune yeah. buttons, black tune yeah. machines. I mean, with the contrast. And then the laminate, black uh, laminate back here. Yeah, with the contrast binding. of the natural wood. It's, God, it's so Oh, cool. it's killer, yeah. There's even binding right here in the. In here. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, black binding there. So beautiful. it's just one of the coolest looking Ricks that I've ever seen. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it just as much as they already dominate just cool guitar design, this difference in color with, with this one is just so yeah. cool. These things have two pickups, you know, the traditional setup. You got the pickup switch that switches back and forth on the neck and the bridge. Uh, of course, the neck's going to be warmer, the bridge be brighter, just like any, any guitar that has two pickups in that sense. The middle position is both of them. But they have these, uh, like, Filtertron kind of pickups that are, that you see on a, you see on a Rickenbacker or you see on a Gretsch mm -hmm. is the kind of class of pickup. That's one class of pickup. There's also humbuckers, which you would see on a Gibson, and then there's single coils, which you would see on, like, a Fender. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a certain sound man can, can I play it absolutely um, it's a certain sound that people love and people don't like you know I got to pick thank you um, but it's a it can give you both a real high shimmery bright um, which they're known for with the Beatles and you know just that shimmery um, and then it can give you a real chunky uh, Uh, just heaviness yeah. about it. And um, so in the 60s, you know, a lot of people were playing these for that real, you know, playing it up on the yeah. bridge pickup with that real shimmery bright sound. It was just the Beatles sound. The jangle. Yeah, the jangle. Um, but in the 80s, they were reborn as like a heavy instrument. Mm -hmm. The emo scene, mm -hmm. uh, like Rites, Rites of Spring, of course, is one of my all-time favorite bands from D.C. and um, Guy, who then went on to be a Fugazi, played um, a Rickenbacker in, in, I guess, the end of Rice Spring and in Fugazi. Mm -hmm. And just, um, he would play, I think, up on the uh, bridge, I believe, to get some of that jangly sound to complement. Ian would play that uh, SG on those humbuckers, mm -hmm. um, and it would have a good complement. But that kind of right to spring kind of just wash of emo sound yeah. you know was the just rickenbacker full on like, like yeah and like heavy in the sense of 
big and present exactly. in wall of sound. Very, not, not, yeah. not like metal. Like you point that out, and that's a good point. I, don't, I use the word heavy too much it's to mean too many different things. I don't mean heavy like uh, I mean there's heavy bands that are metal bands that have seven yeah. string guitars yeah, that yeah, are yeah. like super heavy. I'm not talking about that. I mean. Uh, wild almost loud full, like yeah. filling the spectrum the sound spectrum of a wash yeah of sound you yeah know what I mean? yeah they're the big rock and roll sound yeah yeah so yeah for sure i'm glad you point that out that difference out um there's a there's this fifth on all these rickenbackers there's this extra knob that in most cases what it does is it adds boost to the neck pickup and it's like a i don't know if it's a gain or if it's a just a some kind of booster, I, I feel like it thickens the sound, not only increases the volume, but mm -hmm. you can hear like, um, wow, yeah. So, um, and, it, and so if you're just, you know, like, or excuse me, if you're, Like that emo kind of just uh, yeah. like all strings. Yeah. You know, you're just hitting one thing like. Yeah, that's what yeah. the piece I did for the theme song was just this big, everything is all strings going. It's just all strings, yeah. yeah. And it just sounds big and washed over. Like mm -hmm. it just, like you just pour a uh, guitar over top of the band. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really the just best for that, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. And of course you can, it's more versatile, of course, you know, you can do the kind of... Um, the more you know or but anyway it's got it's got some different sounds that it can do but to me the jangly 60s thing for the Beatles lover and then the just wash of crazy powerful punk rock kind of emo sound to me are my favorite now it's weird though you know um, there's photos of um, Stevie Ray Vaughan playing Rick. Really? Which wow. is so strange to yeah, me. Yeah, I do not associate this guitar with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Not at all. I mean, I, but I think it was probably just maybe he had to sell his <laughs> Strat temporarily and get a Rick. I don't know. But, but you know, can you imagine playing, you know, bluesy solos and stuff? He, I mean, apparently he was doing it in, in, on a Rick and then, uh, of course, you know, the Strat is perfect perfectly made for him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I guess it's like to some degree, especially if you're someone at his level, to some degree a guitar is a guitar. You know? Yeah, right. And and it's and guitars are versatile. I mean when you got two pickups and then not only can you switch between them but also choose both of them. And not only that, you can use a tone knob to roll on and off on how bright each one is and you can thicken this front one, which then you could go back and pull back the volume on it after you thicken. I mean, you have a lot of options mm -hmm. to create to uh, different tones and, and sounds, you know. Yeah, that is another, that's another thing about the Rickenbacker thing is that the way that the pickguard has, it's like there's a pickguard and here is like the second story of the pickguard. Right, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, and it's it adds to that. It's almost like the like Jaguar where you look at it and you're like, it's so kind of like, it's complicated in a way that is exciting. Yeah, like, right, right, I right. Can, yeah. yeah, you can experiment. Yeah. This is like a la little laboratory right here, you know. Yeah. Um, but I love the whole blacked out stuff, man. I, I wish I had that black top on there, but it just looks so cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, the back and the neck is gorgeous. Yeah, it's that's, awesome. That, and again, it's normal Rickenbacker stuff, but this color scheme is just, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's really cool. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, there it is. So I'm a big fan of the Rickenbacker. Um, it's got a lot of versatile uh, sounds. Um, you know, it was great uh, in the 60s jangle, and, and it was great in the 80s, late 80s uh, emo birth of emo mm -hmm. uh, and then and then I mean of course you can't ignore um, I mean Tom Petty and, Tom, right. and Mike yeah, Campbell yeah, yeah. and them playing it for uh, Tom Petty's music yeah I mean it's just a great sound there, yeah you know? which is probably coming from the Beatles thing it, yeah like, that would be an evolution of that yeah, 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 yeah for sure but it's fuller versus um, the Beatles yeah. is real thin jangling mm -hmm. you yeah. know whereas um, you get uh, yeah it's just what happened to rock music? It just got yeah. bigger and fuller, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and it was just an iconic guitar. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. 
Very cool, man. All right, well, that's it. That's the Rickenbacker 360 1980s uh, Maple Glow Blacked Out. We'll see you Rick and back here next time. <laughs> Mike doesn't like puns in YouTube videos. I don't either, I just did it though.